is Wendy with loveandstampin.com and I'm super excited that you're here with me today because I am going to teach you what I know about no line watercoloring. Now before we even get started, I want to say two things. First and foremost, I'm doing this because I posted a photo of a card that I use no line watercoloring and people have requested in large volumes for me to do a video on how to do this. Second, I am a super beginner at this. I am not experienced. This is all brand new to me. It's something I've been practicing privately and quietly and not sharing because, well, they were a hot mess when I started. So the two things that I've learned most about no line watercoloring is that number one, it takes practice. And number two, it looks awful until you're finished. So you kind of just have to keep going and working with it and not give up. So we're gonna go down to the stamp table and I'm going to show you what I know. We are not gonna complete a whole card today because it's too time consuming to no line watercolor and then make a card. Today's focus is just gonna be teaching you the technique and then I'll finish a card on my own and there will be a photo of it over on my blog. So let's go try this thing. Okay, here we go. The first thing is I'm going to use the brand new stamp set from Stampin' Up! Prized Peony. Some people say Peony. I will tell you right off the bat, I am, I was raised by people from the South who say a lot of words incorrectly. <laughs> And I've been told my whole life that there's a whole slew of words I don't say correctly. Um, even in my own house, my kid corrects me. It's really bad. But anyway, I say peony. Some people say peony. And you say potato. I say potato. You say it how you want to say it. The bottom line is the stamp set's gorgeous. So we're going to use this. We're going to use Mary Merlot for the color of the peony. Now, I want to say most of them are like pinkish colors um, when I've looked them up online and varying degrees of pink. And then there's some kind of dark crimson-y colors. So I'm going to go with this one today. And then I'm using crumb cake for my no line. So we're going to get this one out because this one is one I have not colored yet. So I thought it would be fun to do a new one. You grab a clear block. And then the other thing I want to share is I have two bowls of water here. Uh, what something that I learned a long time ago in watercoloring is you should always have two bowls of water. One is your dirty bowl and one is your clean bowl. So I would go into this bowl to clean my brush and I go into this one to pick up clean, clear water. Um, I'm using a silver black velvet brush, number two round. Uh, I like a really tiny brush because I'm not very skilled at this, so I need to be able to get really small. I have a paper towel to help dab off my water if I have excess water on my brush. And then this paper, I hate to say, is not Stampin' Up! paper. This is Bristol um, paper. So let me explain why I'm using this. Bristol paper takes water very, very well. And it's technically not a watercolor paper, but it does lend itself to water. I tried doing no line watercoloring on our thick whisper white paper and it just smeared and did not take the water well enough. Now, if you're very experienced, you probably could use any paper and be okay. But because I'm not, I have found that this is the best. I also tried using regular watercolor paper. Regular watercolor paper has a texture to it. So the problem with that is when you're stamping and you're stamping off multiple times and getting lighter and lighter and lighter, it becomes harder and harder to see the lines. I personally have very bad vision. So I have to be able to see the clear lines as best as possible because I already struggle with not being able to see very well. So for me, I have tried several papers and Bristol paper works the best for me. Anything that I share with you today that is not a Stampin' Up! product 
will be linked below the video. I get these items on Amazon. So I get my silver brushes on Amazon, which are a really high quality, nice brush. And I also get my papers on Amazon that I don't, that the papers that I, are not Stampin' Up! papers. Okay, let's get started. So you're going to take a light color. So you could use Smoky Slate or you can use Crumb Cake. You're going to ink your uh, stamp up really nice. And then you're going to stamp it one, two, three times. So you can see here, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter each time. This is also generation stamping, which I had planned doing a whole video on. And I don't know if I'm going to now, but I might. Generation stamping is cool because it gives you three different colors all in one, right? So this is the one we're going to actually use for our coloring. And I am going to zoom the video in so that you can see what we're doing pretty close. Now, the reason I like to stamp them all together is because I'm gonna use this one for a reference guide. So we're gonna take Mary Merlot and I'm gonna squeeze the snot out of it here in the center and open it up and that puts ink on my palette. I have my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and get it nice and wet and this is a thirsty brush, which means it's gonna pick up quite a bit of water. So I'm getting that wet right off the bat. Now, the first thing I do is I look for the shadows. Now, I'm gonna tell you right up front, I don't know if this is the right way to do this, it's just how it works for me personally. So if something works for you, do it. Um, that's basically my best advice. Don't worry about what the rules or the right way to do something is. If something works well for you, then just do it that way. So here's my reference guide. Here's where I'm going to actually color. I wanna start with the shadows. So I'm gonna pick up some ink and I actually work one petal at a time. <laughs> I know you're like, oh my God. So what you wanna do is you wanna lay your darkest color, darkest pigment down in the shadow area. Now anywhere where a petal would lay on top of another petal is where it would be the darkest. Now you're gonna see, I'll go into my dirty water, dab it off, so I've lost some of my pigment, and now I'm gonna start pulling it out from that dark line. So I'm moving the pigment out, and I wanna get lighter and lighter as I go towards the tip of that petal. So that's why you see me dabbing it off as I go. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest, it's really hard to explain this stuff. <laughs> so I hope I do okay. So as you can see, looking at this, it's like, oh Lord, this is gonna be hideous. But I promise you, if you just keep going, it gets better. So um, again, like I said, I'm no, I, I don't know that I'm doing this correctly according to somebody who is a watercolorist. I just know that this is how it works for me. So I'm referring back over here because again, remember I'm blind, I can't see well at all. So I'm having to refer over here to see where my petals separate and make sure that I, and you can see I'm dabbing off a lot. And that's because I want it to get lighter and lighter. And then I want it a little bit darker here. So I'm just gonna go back in and add a little more depth. Okay, so we're just gonna keep working this um, backwards, kind of. So here's the center of the flower. So I'm really close down, and my head might even be in the video at this point, I don't know. So I'm gonna make that nice and dark. Oops, dab it off. And then we're gonna pull, pull up from there. And all of this is based on your brush, your paper, um, all of those things play a role in doing this. 
um, you have to learn your brush and how it works. Like this brush picks up a lot of pigment. It soaks up a lot of water. So you have to understand and know how the brush you're using works. So for example, Stampin' Up! has come out with new um, water brushes that hold the water in the pen. They, they are called, um, I forget what they're called in the catalog, but they used to be called aqua painters. Okay, so I got a set of those. And I considered using them for this video just because I was like, oh, I'll use them. But the problem was I didn't know how the brush would handle. And I feel more comfortable teaching you with a brush that I, I'm i familiar with. And I know, I know exactly what it's going to do. Um, I know how much water it's going to hold. I have a feel for it. I think that's the best way to explain it is you have to have a feel for for what you're doing. Now, let's talk about shadows and light. Anywhere that you put a shadow, you are going to, that is, that is the area that's going to recess. So what that means is it's going to appear as that area is moving backwards and anything that's lighter is going to move forwards. So it's important to know that because when you're painting the petals, you want the appearance that there's areas that are shaded and areas that are lighter, which is why every time I dab this, I'm getting rid of some pigment. That's the idea. Okay, I want to get rid of pigment in areas that I want to be lighter so that as I move out towards a edge, it's lighter and that is what gives you the illusion of layers because this is a flat image, right? So. There's no way to create um, I want clean water here because I want to go really light at the edge of this. There's really no way to create dimension with a flat object. Now I want to show you a trick. I got this a little darker than I really want it. So I'm going into clear water, dabbing my brush off. And then I'm going in and I'm picking color back up out of the image. So it lightens. Okay, so you just keep working all the way around. Now, uh, a tip that I will give you is that um, if you have just put water down, in an area. So for example, let me give you an example here. So like, let's say I had just painted this petal and then I go to this petal and I paint it. What will happen sometimes is you will move the color from this one because it's still wet. The pigment from this one will move into this one. So that's why you see me jumping around to different petals. If I stay all in one area, like right here, I have to be very careful because I could very easily get this dark pigment, the dark color, moving into this petal over here where it's supposed to be light. And I don't wanna do that. So we're just going to keep going. And I, I keep referring back to this. So you can't see me doing that. But I want to promise you that I am. Because, again, I cannot, I cannot see very well. And so I have to continually refer back. 
and leaving a little bit of white here and there in between the petals is completely fine. It actually will give a little bit of dimension. Now, the area that I want to be the very darkest is the area right around the center of the flower. I don't know what that area is called. I know there's a technical term and somebody who's amazing is going to tell me uh, in the comments below on the video. So I appreciate you ahead of time because I know someone's gonna be like, it's called this. And I don't know what it's called, so I appreciate that. I wanna say stamen, but I feel like that's not right. So there you go. There's the extent of Wendy's flower expertise. And I generally speaking have to go look online for photos of all of these flowers. Um, I've had to text people and be like, take pictures of a flower and text it and say, what is this flower? <laughs> so that I can then go online and figure out how to color it or paint it. So keep that in mind as well that um, Google and Pinterest are your friend. If you go on those, uh, um, oftentimes it will help you a lot. Okay, so you can see here, this is really looking like an absolute hot mess um, at this point, but it won't. It won't stay this way, I promise. It will come together really beautifully and you will be surprised, I think, at how well it comes together. So another thing is a lot of times when I see videos like this online, they speed them up. And the, the, the creator speeds them up and makes them go fast. And I understand why. And the reason why is because you're seeing right now, it's very time consuming. So not a lot of people want to sit and watch somebody paint this intricately for so long. So right here, this petal, this piece here is folding over this petal, but it's all one petal. So this area here would be darker. There would be a little bit of lightness here. And then this area here would be darker because that's where the fold is at. So anywhere that something folds over onto itself, I have to look at my picture, hold on. Where am I at? I don't wanna lose my spot. Okay, that's this, that's this, okay. So anywhere that folds over onto itself is going to be um, darker or where like one petal lays on top of another petal or anything like that. Um, and again, I want to repeat and say, you know, I am a beginner. I don't know anything about anything except what has worked best for me. And so, you know, if you're a professional watercolorist and you're watching this, I am sure you're cringing. <laughs> I'm sure you're like, oh my God, that's a mess. But for somebody who makes cards and frankly, like anybody who gets my cards is not going to be very judgy, I guess would be the word, of, of my level of professionalism as far as my abilities are concerned. And so, um, yeah, so there's that. I, I don't know. I don't know why I even said all that except to say that I'm a novice and that's okay. It's okay. That's how we learn. So you can see now that it's starting to kind of come together. I mean, it's still kind of looking like a hot mess. <laughs> But I promise you, like, as we keep going, you're just going to be like, wow, this is weird. So at this point, what I'm going to do, because this seriously does take, take a really long time, 
is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video because I've given you all the tips I can possibly give you about how to do this. And so um, I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to speed it up. And anywhere that I feel like you need to know something about what I'm doing, uh, I will stop and share that. Okay, so I've pretty much finished coloring and you can see it came together very nicely. You can definitely tell that it's a flower and it has definition, but I wanted to do the center um, for you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use early espresso because I want the center of the flower to be like a dark brown. And I'm just gonna start in the center because if you look at this, it shows it's really dark in the middle. And then I'm gonna dab off and just move the pigment out from the center. Now, anywhere that would be touching the center, it's gonna be even darker because it's recessed, right? This is down inside the flower. So my fix for this, again, let's just talk about how we don't know if Wendy's doing it correctly, she's just doing what works for her, is I go in with my darkest pigment that I can find, that I can get, and I just go around the center and kind of drag that really dark pigment all around the center because I want that to recess or look recessed in the middle. Okay. And then I'm just going to soften the edges with clean, clean water. And then like this guy here, this is actually the outside of the petal. So I'm just gonna try to create a little bit more definition there. This petal here is actually folding back up on the flower. So it would be dark in here and it would be dark at the base. And then I'm just kind of looking for any other areas that I feel like are either too white or too light that might need softening and I'm just using clean, clear water to kind of go back over those. I wanna keep my edges really light because that's what kind of gives us all this dimension, right? So that's it, that's the finished uh, peony or peony, however you prefer to say it. And you can see that it ends up coming together really, really beautifully. And I'm going to make a card with it and finish it off. So you can check that out over on my blog. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I hope this helped you and I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment below if you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you next time. Bye.